The Lord God is my strength, and He will make my feet like hinds feet. He will make me to walk upon high places. Wow. You know, we read that at the close of our last teaching in the book of Habakkuk. And what you see there is the faithfulness of God that in the very worst of circumstances, our God, when we are resting in Him, places our feet upon high places. And if there was ever an hour that we need our feet placed on high places, I would say it would be today. That we would find ourselves secure in the Lord. And that's, that's my prayer for you because obviously the enemy of our soul is working overtime today to invoke fear upon mankind because he knows that fear is the opposite of faith. And it is faith that allows us to stand justified before the living God. It is faith that allows us to stand justified before the living God. This is even the reason that Jesus said that your work and my work is honestly to believe. And you say, my work is to believe? Yes, and you know, you look at that word work and, and the, the Greek word there is ergos. But, but basically it means to it means to, to exert energy towards the accomplishment of something. So what Jesus is honestly saying, we have to exert some energy towards believing. Towards believing. It doesn't, it doesn't just fall down on us. It doesn't just rain down even as God allowed manna to rain down and feed his people. It is something that we have to put energy into. Well, we also know that faith comes by hearing, hearing the Word of God. So if we are going to exert energy towards believing, as Jesus said we were to do, then we have to hear the Word. So you know, I, I ask you today, in this hour, are you listening and spending more time on Facebook or are you spending more time listening to the Word of God? Because the reality is we become what we absorb. We become what it is that we absorb. So. I ask you today, what are you absorbing? What are you absorbing? We know that there are grand atrocities manifesting in our midst. Atrocities that we as Americans have never seen as widespread as we see today. From Seattle to Atlanta, Georgia to Minneapolis, to Dallas, Texas, all across the land, we are seeing rioting, we are seeing protesting, we are seeing looting, we are seeing murders, we are seeing anarchy. Why would this be coming to our nation? Well, we talked about it last week in the book of Achaic. This is upon us and this is in our midst because we as a people, we as a nation, have rejected the very principles upon which our foundation is built. The Word of God. We have rejected it. We have Supreme Court justices, as we noted last week, that voted to align LGBT agendas with the 1964 Civil Rights Act. When we 
when we do these things that are blatantly heretical and blasphemous according to the Word of God, we can't expect anything less than rioting and looting and murderers. Because that's what rejection of God actually brings. It opens the door wide to destruction. We saw it. We saw something happen at the World Trade Center that America had never seen. A major assault attacked by foreigners upon American soil. And it was a shaking. But let me tell you, it was a sign of the times. Because we have been on this path of destruction in America for an extended period of time. I can go back, I go back just to 1964 at the assassination or murder, if you will, of JFK. And I look at the things that Lyndon Johnson did during his term. The ushering in of the great society and all that was purported to be accomplished through that. But you know what? I can look at the numbers. How did we go then in 1963 from less than a third of a trillion dollars of debt to $27 trillion of debt today? Well, let me tell you, the things that we were told would be good that were legislated under Lyndon Johnson in 1964 and 65 have been hugely responsible for the amassing of debt that we are under today. Let me just give you some of the things that, that were brought upon the American people. The Wilderness Protection Act, listen to the words they use, because read between the lines, saved 9.1 million acres of forest land from industrial development. We've been an industrial nation. We were the, we were the industrial leader of the world. We have fed more of the world than any other nation on the earth because of this. But if you see, what happened through that legislation was stunt our growth which is what it was intended to do, as well as government take more control. They also, we know today that one of the great underminings of our current state, of our current society, has been our educational system. Well, this was major turning points in our educational system because the Elementary and Secondary Education Act provided major funding for American public schools. That means the government put their hand into public education and took control of it through funding. And where's that funding coming from? Well, that funding is the creation of all of this massive debt that we now are under today. But let's keep reading the list. Medicare was created to offset cost of health care for the nation's elderly. But let me tell you, our health care costs are so exorbitant today as compared to that point in time. This was another ploy for the government to get into our lives. But you see, when we are not doing things God's way, then we are sold into bondage which is what we are witnessing. The National, listen to this one, the National Endowment for the Arts and Humanities used public money to fund artists and galleries. Now that's what you wanted with your tax dollars, right? That's what you're out working for and that's what you wanted to see your money go to. Hmm, well, it was initiated here, and now literally billions of dollars have been wasted 
in our nation. Your money wasted for things of this nature. The Immigration Act, and we've talked a lot about this one lately because we know we've had major issues with immigration, but this is where it began to unravel. The Im Immigration Act ended, listen to their wording, discriminatory quotas based on ethnic origin. Everything they do, they put a twist in the wording to bring deception. But again, we have to remember that our enemy is a liar. Our enemy has been lying from the beginning. So the only way that he can accomplish the destruction that he wants to accomplish is by lying to us and convincing us of something that is not. And so that's what was accomplished here. They also brought forth an Omnibus Housing Act, and this provided funds to construct low-income housing. So I ask you, when did it become your responsibility, beyond what God asked of us, when did it become your responsibility to provide housing for other people? But that is what was ushered in through this Omnibus Housing Act in 1964 and 5. Congress, listen to this. Oh, we got our first hint of climate control. Congress tightened pollution controls with stronger air and water quality acts. Okay, so we saw truly a major move towards this ultimate agenda that we now are seeing the end fruits of. Listen to this one. Standards. Sta that sounds good, doesn't it? Everybody needs a standard. But standards were raised for safety in consumer products. Wow. This is just, this is just a small list of the things that were ushered in after the assassination of John F. Kennedy. So, you know, one of the major things that happened through all that was a major attack upon the family. As, as they offered minorities money to not be married. In essence, that's what they did. Even to the African American families that brought a new degree of separation in the family and the removal of fathers from their households. So we've seen that massive attack upon the family. We have seen our divorce rates absolutely skyrocket. Let's look at what God's Word says. You know, because in all honesty, family was God's first institution. And that's why, again, I want you to acknowledge, that's why the devil would come so hard against the family. Because he knew if he, could, if he could get the family, then he could get the children. And that's exactly what he's been out to do since the beginning. But you know, another major thing, even besides pulling fathers out of the house, you know, the next major movement that this far left progressive uh, anti-Christ movement has done was elevate feminism as a, as a major, as a lifestyle and a, and a right and so forth. But you know what? Let's go back to truth. Let's get, if, if we want to turn this ship, then we have to return to truth. That's why we talked earlier about spending time in this Word, absorbing this Word so that we do know how to live life dynamically, so that we do know how to live life abundantly as Jesus came to afford us. Because let me tell you one thing that needs to happen right now. We must change our perspective. We must we must take on a heavenly perspective even of this life 
as compared to a worldly, earthly perspective. Because what our perspective is, is truly what we become. So I exhort you today towards a heavenly perspective. Where do we get our heavenly perspective? From the Word of God. So as, as we look at this attack that, that we have witnessed for decades now against the family in America, let's look and see what God's Word says a family should look like. Let's look and see what God's Word says about a relationship between a wife and her husband and the husband and his wife. So turn with me, if you would, to 1 Peter chapter 3. Wives, likewise, be submissive to your own husbands. Whoa! Whoa, now that... That word submissive just kind of raises the hair up on a bunch of feminists today because they don't get it. But let me tell you, I really believe there's a lot of hurting, wretched feminists because they don't know this truth, because their state of mind and heart has so separated them from the love of their Creator. So I pray maybe everyone would have ears to hear this today. Maybe just a different perspective because this is a heavenly perspective. This is truth. And, and let me tell you, a heavenly perspective in truth is the exact opposite of a worldly perspective in hell. Wives, be submissive to your own husbands that even if, this, if some do not obey the word, they without a word may be won by your chaste conversation. In, the, in other words, by the life that you're living, by the example that you're setting before them. So don't let, listen to this one. You know, once again, you can look at the world and the world, uh, you know, it's always portraying these, these gorgeous six-foot models and, and all of their adornment. But the Word right here tells us, don't let your adornment be merely outward. Arranging the hair, wearing gold, or putting on fine apparel. Listen to what the Word of God says. Let it be the hidden person of the heart with the incorruptible beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit, which is very precious in the sight of God. Oh, wow. Let me tell you, it's not just precious and beautiful in the sight of God. It's precious and beautiful in the sight of your husband. And that's why God wants it, because God knows that that's what He's created woman for and the responsibility that He has imparted to woman so that this relationship can be, so that this marriage can be, so that this family can be what God envisioned it to be, what God desired it to be. So let's go on there. For in this manner, in former times, the holy women who trusted in God also adorned themselves being submissive to their own husbands. As Sarah obeyed Abraham, she, she even called him Lord, the Word says, whose daughters you are if you do God good and are not afraid of any terror. So that's, that's what God's calling a wife to. That's the attitude, the mindset, the gentleness, the quietness, the submission. But let me tell you, you're playing an amazing role in that because your husband can see the power of God working in you. But now let's look to the husband. Let's go over and see what, what God says about husbands. He says, husbands, likewise, 
Dwell with your wives with understanding. Giving honor to your wife. Oh, wow. What, what does it look like when we honor something? We put that which we honor in a very special place. And what God is saying right here, men, is you and I are to honor, are to put our wives in a very special place. Even as, and, and, and a lot of women, you know, feminists, they, they, they have trouble with this. Even as the weaker vessel. Because this is just a biological reality. It's just the way God made us. Men are physically a, a stronger creation than a woman. But again, think of fine china. Think of that beautiful vessel designed by a masterful artist and how you just simply can look upon it in admiration. You see, that's why God made women as He did. They are beautiful to look upon. They are, they are softer in their appearance and in their makeup as designed by God. It's beautiful. I mean, this is the way it's supposed to be. And here's why. Because we are heirs together of the grace of life. And we must do this. We must honor our wives if we want our prayers not to be hindered. So men, women, I think we both have an exhortation today as to how we are to move our families forward. Finally, all of us be of one mind having compassion for each other. Love each other as brothers. Be tender-hearted. Be courteous. Not returning evil for evil or reviling for reviling. Man, is a, there's a whole lot of that going on in the world today. And that's the way people are responding. But that's not how you and I are supposed to respond as children of God. But basically, we are to be blessing others knowing that we have been called to this. Even, listen to this, even so that you and I might receive our blessings. Wives, do you want your blessing? Husband, do you want your blessing? Do we, as God's children, want our blessing? I pray so. I encourage you today, be the light. Let the light of Christ shine forth through you that He may be glorified and that people may be drawn to Him in this dark hour in which we are living. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not be in want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in paths of righteousness for His name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever.
If you have not ever accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, you know, I would, I, I would be remiss to not extend that opportunity to you today. Because I want to tell you, there's just no other way. There is no other way to find joy unspeakable. There is no other place to find peace that passes understanding. And let me tell you, I think all of the things that we've talked about today, without that relationship with Jesus Christ, there will be no peace in the days ahead. So, I extend that offer to accept Jesus even today. And please call one of our numbers and let us reach out, let us get you some material, let us, uh, let us help in any way that we can for you to engage in a meaningful, fulfilling, abundant relationship with the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. If, if you desire that, would you pray this prayer with me? Our Father, I come humbly before you today acknowledging that I have sinned and fallen short, way short of your glory and the call and the desires that you have for my life. So Father, because of that, I acknowledge my dire need for the precious blood of Jesus Christ to wash over me and bring forth my healing and my resurrection. So Father, I thank you today that you made a way even before the foundation of the world, even the crucifixion of Jesus Christ, your only begotten Son, that I could be redeemed and that I could not only live in this life abundantly, but I could live eternally in the presence of your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. The Lord be with you. We hope to hear from you soon.